Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a problem with sums. So we have this sum of imaginary powers of i, e to the power 2 pi i over 5, 4 pi i over 5, so on and so forth. And we're going to evaluate the sum. Numerical answer we're going to find. So how do you add something like this? What is e to the power something with i means? Let's go ahead and talk about the Euler's formula first because it's just amazing. So here's how it works, e to the power i theta. By the way, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a playlist uh, for all my lecture videos. You can go ahead and look at the basics if you're new to complex numbers or if you need a refresher. e to the power i theta is cosine theta plus i times sine theta. This is one of the most amazing, if not the most amazing, equation in the world of mathematics. Beautiful, because it connects the trigonometry to exponentials, the imaginary to transcendentals and, you know, integers and so on and so forth. Obviously, if you replace theta with pi, you get a beautiful identity. Uh, which is known as, I think, Euler's identity, and there should be two Euler's identities, I believe. And anyways, there's a lot going on here. So, our goal is to get to this sum, and so if you want to replace theta with something, right? So let's just go ahead and go with the first one first. In this case, uh, if you separate the i, you notice that theta is 2 pi over 5. So if you go ahead and replace theta with 2 pi over 5, you're supposed to get cosine of 2 pi over 5 plus i times sine of 2 pi over 5. Great. Now how do you find those values? What is 2 pi over 5? Pi over 5 is 36 degrees, and if you double that, you're going to get 72 degrees. For those of you, including myself, uh, that are more comfortable with degrees than radians, uh, this would be 72 degrees. And then you're thinking about multiples of that number, like 144, 216, 288, so on and so forth, right? We're adding those numbers. So this could be turned into the following. We have, and allow me to write with degree, uh, in degrees, but without the degree symbol, because I don't write the degree symbol most of the time, but it's understood, right? I hope so. So we're going to go ahead and add these things. And 3 times that, 216, right? I didn't get it wrong, did I? And then 4 times that should be 288. Or just double the 244. I mean 144. Okay, here we go. So those are the four th different things we're going to add. When we add these things, we have to separate it, right? There's a real part and imaginary part. So let's just take this one, for example. We basically have the sum of 2 uh, or 4 different trigonometric values. Let's go ahead and take a look. By the way, something interesting about this is that cosine 288 is actually a cosine of negative 72 and cosine is an even function. So this is the same as cosine 72, right? And the same thing is true for cosine 216 because these two add up to 360, don't they? Or do they not? Let me check. Yeah, they do. Okay, great. I wasn't sure. But uh, and probably in radian form, that's easier to see. 10 pi over 5. Exactly. There you go. Sometimes radians are good. But uh, this can also be written as cosine of 144. So in other words, you're actually adding the, these two things. That's probably why I said two things. And I'm just doubling it. So take that and double it. Multiply by 2. You'll get the answer. But again, the question is, how do you add those two things? We have a formula called sum to product which kind of gives us this, and that's kind of hard to memorize, right? But if you really want to come up with a formula for this, I would highly recommend that you replace a with x plus y, and this with x minus y, and then from there, you're going to realize that the sine x, sine y is cancel out. You end up with 2 cosine x cosine y. So at the end, it kind of turns into 2 cosine x cosine y when you simplify it, and then... Uh, we can basically solve for x and y in terms of a and b, since x plus y is equal to a and x minus y is equal to b. From here, um, x is just going to be a plus b over 2. So it's going to look like this. Make sense? And this is going to be cosine again. Great. So both cosine. That's typical of cosine formulas. 
and now we have this identity. If you plug in 144 in 72, by the way, the difference doesn't matter because cosine is even. Again, that tells you that this is correct. And you can just go ahead and plug in. What is the average of 72 and 144? If you add them up, you're going to get 216. Half of that will be 108. So you're still going to be getting something like cosine of 108 from here. And the difference is 72 and divide by 2. You're going to get cosine of 36. And you can turn this into negative cosine of 72. And then look at the product. And there's a really cool, neat way to do it. Do you want me to show you? I believe I made a video, video about this a while ago. But if you go ahead and take that, of course, there's a, a 2 in the front. But um, you can definitely... Let's just take this, okay? Let's just take this expression. And then we can now go ahead and multiply by something to turn it into um, a double angle formula. So I'm going to multiply by sine 36 and divide by that. And now 2 sine 36 cosine 36 is going to turn into sine 72 from the double angle formula. So we're going to end up with negative sine 72 cosine 72 divided by sine 36 and now we do need to multiply by 2 and now this is gonna turn into negative sine 144 oops let me rewrite it that didn't look good negative sine 144 and at the bottom you get 2 times sine 36 and of course sine 144 and sine 36 are equal because they are complementary, right? Or are they supplementary? I think supplementary. Anyways, you get the idea. So from here, you're going to be able to find the answer, right? But again, don't forget to double at the end because we do have the two times and that should give you the answer. Of course, these two are going to cancel out. If you double negative one half, you're going to get negative one. So we're supposed to get negative one. Wait a minute. We did so much work for negative one, right? Obviously, there's another way to look at it. You could evaluate the value of cosine 72 and you could also do the negative cosine 36, right? So this would turn into cosine 72 plus cosine 36, which is weird, right? The sum equals the product, sort of. Yes, that's what happens with this because uh, this is a, uh, there's a special triangle, the golden triangle, kind of split it up. This is 72, 72, 72, 36, 36, something like this. And then from here, you can find these values. But again, that's going to be uh, a little bit of time consuming. Let's go ahead and proceed with the other formula. I mean the method. I, I guess I didn't call this anything, but let's call that first method and let this be the second method. Okay, ready? So here's what we're going to do instead of going through all these um, formulas and identities. There's actually a nicer way to do it. This is an identity you definitely need to know about complex numbers, super duper important. So we're going to use substitution because substitution is powerful. Let's go ahead and call this z, and this becomes z squared, this becomes z cubed, and this becomes z to the fourth power. You see that? They're all multiples. So now we got the following, z plus z squared plus z cubed plus z to the fourth. Beautiful. Now, if you go ahead and call this w, right you can add one to both sides and then when you do that you're going to get something that is sort of factorable or i should probably say this uh, multiply this is the the sum of these powers and you can also use the geometric uh, series formula z to the five minus one minus uh, divided by z minus one and that's going to equal w plus one Make sense? Now, what is z to the 5 minus 1? In this case, z to the 5th power is supposed to equal uh, the, what's it called? z to the 5th equals e to the power 2i, uh, which is 2 pi i, which is 1 in the complex world. So this is 1. Beautiful. So this is 0. So w is negative 1. Isn't that nice? Yes, this is negative 1. That's what we were looking for. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.